uh, um, the diagnosis of chronic kidney disease is not established and tests need to be repeated. Chronic kidney disease is divided into five groups depending on the presence or absence of kidney, kidney damage and on the level of kidney function. And stage one and two include uh, um, a kidney damage with normal or increased uh, GFR or um, with uh, um, decreased or slightly decreased GFR and moderate and clinically significant uh, stages referred to stage uh, three, four and five which include a GFR of 30 to 50 milliliters per minute, um, 15 to 29 mils per minute, and lower than 15 mils per minute. And the prevalence, the overall prevalence in the adult population is about 13.1%. About 50% of these patients are older than 70 years old, and in the US, more than 26 million people are affected by chronic kidney disease. Uh, as you can see here in the diagram, you see that most of the patients, the vast majority, suffers from chronic, chronic kidney disease stages one, two, three, whereas uh, stages four and five are rather seldom. And the incidence appears to uh, be increasing over the last decades, and this might be caused by the higher incidence of risk factors. Risk, risk factors such as diabetes, um, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, and obesity, and also because of the aging populations uh, with people higher than 70 years old. And another especially, uh, another important cause for the, for the higher incidence of chronic kidney disease is the higher incidence of acute kidney injury, which plays an important role. And it is therefore of high importance to diagnose chronic kidney disease in the preoperative period, the glomerular filtration rate is routinely estimated through the use of serum creatinine. However, this might be imprecise and might lead to a higher, uh, to an overdiagnosis of chronic kidney disease. And cysteine C has been shown to be a good alternative. It is a filtration marker and uh, seems to be a good alternative. And this is a cross-sectional analysis, including more than 5,000 patients. And the authors tried to analyze estimating equations for a glomerular filtration rate using uh, serum creatinine, cystatine C, and a combination of serum creatinine and cystatine C. And you see the results here. Um, the, they show that an equation with creatinine and cystatine C together um, may or show a better accuracy for the prediction or for the, uh, for, the, um, for the measurement of glomerular filtration rate, especially of a GFR of lower than 60 mils per minute, which is the threshold for the diagnosis of chronic kidney disease. And although chronic kidney disease is a frequent uh, um, diagnosis, it's actually underdiagnosed, and it has negative consequences on the whole organism. And here you have an overview of those systems which are affected by chronic kidney disease. And of course, the consequences um, depend on the severity of chronic kidney disease, but they are massive, and they need to be kept in mind um, in, when you manage patients with chronic kidney disease. And of course, I will not focus on every organ system because that would far exceed the time schedule for my talk. But um, there are some points which I, in my opinion, uh, are very interesting and which I want to focus at. And let's go first to the occurrence of acute kidney injury. And this is a systematic review and meta-analysis, including uh, 13 studies estimating the risk of chronic kidney disease and end-stage renal disease in patients with and without acute kidney injury and noticeable was the heterogeneous definitions of acute kidney injury. All those included studies were of retrospective design. However, the results show that patients with acute kidney injury have an 8.8-fold increased risk for the development of chronic kidney disease. And if you have a look uh, at the hazard ratios, depending on the severity of acute kidney injury, you see that the higher the severity of AKI, the higher um, the incidence or the, the risk for, um, for chronic kidney disease, which is about 28.2 in patients with severe AKI as compared with those patients who do not suffer from acute kidney injury. And looking only at end-stage renal disease, you see that patients um, with acute kidney injury show a 3.1-fold increased risk for the development of end-stage renal disease. And vice versa. Also, patients with chronic kidney disease have a higher incidence for acute kidney injury. And this is a retrospective analysis, including more than 120,000 uh, patients. Acute kidney injury was defined by the serum creatinine criteria, 
um, the urinary output criteria was excluded. And you see that the lower the GFR, the higher the AKI incidence, which is about 50% in patients with glomerular filtration rates of lower than 15 mils per minute. So one of the main issues uh, for, the perioperative patient, uh, for the perioperative period of patients with chronic kidney disease uh, should be the prevention of acute kidney injury to avoid a new onset of chronic kidney disease and also to avoid a further deterioration of kidney function in patients with already reduced kidney function. And um, as Stefano already showed you, uh, the, um, the CADAGO guidelines for AKI recommends to implement a sort of bundle in patients at high risk for the, uh, for the occurrence of uh, acute kidney injury. And these um, bundles include the following parameters, a discontinuation of all nephrotoxic agents, an insurance of volume status and perfusion pressure, consideration of functional hemodynamic monitoring, a close monitoring of serum creatinine and urinary output, an avoidance of hyperglycemia, and consideration of alternatives to radiocontrast agents. And that this panel truly reduced the incidence of acute kidney injury has been shown by, uh, by the so-called prevention of AKI trial, which was a trial um, Stefano already showed, a single center randomized control trial, which we performed in, at our clinic in Münster. We included 278 patients at high risk for the development of acute kidney injury undergoing cardiac surgery and randomly allocated them to receive either a strict implementation of the Cadigo bundles versus standard care. And the primary endpoint was the incidence of acute kidney injury within 72 hours after surgery. And as you can see here on the bottom, the results show that we have reduced overall AKI incidence of 16.6% uh, in those patients uh, with uh, a strict implementation of the Cadigo bundles. And if you have a look only at moderate and severe acute kidney injury, you see uh, an absolute risk reduction of 15.2% via the strict implementation of the Cadigo bundles. So one of the main issues in the perioperative period of patients with chronic kidney disease should focus on the prevention of acute kidney injury to avoid a new onset of chronic kidney disease and to avoid the further deterioration. So let's now focus on the second system, the cardiovascular system in the perioperative period. And I have some, uh, the question is, does perioperative hemodynamic stabilization protect renal function in surgical patients? And this is a systematic re review, including 20 randomized controlled trials and more than 4,000 patients undergoing surgery. And the objective of this systematic review was to investigate whether perioperative hemodynamics, uh, hemodynamic optimization has an effect on postoperative renal dysfunction. And um, you see that the overall incidence of AKI was about 6.9%. And here on the bottom, on the left, you see that patients in the control group have a higher incidence of acute kidney injury as compared with those patients with an optimized hemodynamic stabilized or with, with optimized hemodynamics. And if you have a look at the adjusted odds ratio, you see that uh, patients with uh, or of the intervention group show a, a significantly or lower odds for the development of acute kidney injury. And if you look only at those studies, which included AKI um, diagnosis via the serum creatinine criteria and the renal replacement therapy criteria, and excluded those studies which um, diagnosed AKI via the urinary output criteria, you see that the results are stable with an odds ratio of 0.66. And even if you look at the mortality, you see that patients with, a, with an optimized perioperative hemodynamics have a lower odds for mortality of about 0.5. But that's not all. Also, the time plays a further pivotal role in this setting. This is an observational trial, including 33,000 patients, non-cardiac surgical patients. Acute kidney injury was only defined by the serum creatinine uh, changes. The overall incidence was 7.4%. And they, the objective of this trial was to analyze the objective between mean arterial pressure and acute kidney injury. And you see that uh, in the results, you see that the risk of acute kidney injury increased with the amount of time spent under a certain MAP threshold. A threshold of 60 millimeters mercury or below 60 millimeters mercury was associated with a higher risk of acute kidney injury and patients with, a, with an MAP threshold of lower than 55 millimeters mercury had the highest risk 
for the, developing, uh, for the development of acute kidney injury. And uh, if you see here, you can see here on the table that the, uh, the higher the amount of time spent under an MIP threshold of 55, the higher the odds for uh, the occurrence of acute kidney injury. So there is currently no study available which focuses only on patients with chronic kidney disease. But since we know that patients with chronic kidney disease have a higher incidence of acute kidney injury, a special focus should, uh, or special emphasis should be taken uh, to the perioperative hemodynamic stabilization in patients with chronic kidney disease. So let's focus on the third system, the hematologic system, and here especially the interaction between chronic kidney disease and uh, anemia. So on this slide, um, you see the results of a prospective observational trial, including 2,100 non-dialysis CKD patients, and the authors um, analyzed the incidence of anemia in different CKD stages. And the overall incidence of anemia was about 45%, and you see that the higher the severity of chronic kidney disease, the higher the incidence of anemia, which was about 95% in patients with chronic kidney disease stage 5. And especially the, uh, sorry, especially the subgroup of patients with diabetes showed a significantly higher risk for anemia as compared with those patients without diabetes. And there are different therapeutic options in the treatment of patients with chronic kidney disease and anemia. And one major factor of the occurrence of uh, anemia in patients with chronic kidney disease is the deficient production of erythropoietin. And this can effectively be treated with the use of erythropoietin-stimulating agents, such as human recombinant uh, erythropoietin or dabapoietin alpha. However, some patients with chronic kidney disease show a hyper-responsiveness against uh, these erythrocyte, uh, erythropoietin stimulating agents. And um, pentoxifiline, which is an agent currently used in the therapy of peripheral vascular disease, has been shown to be a promising agent in the treatment of patients with chronic kidney disease and anemia. And this is a multicenter double-blinded randomized controlled trial, which only includes 53 patients uh, with CKD stages 4 and 5 and a hyper-responsiveness against these erythropoietin-stimulating agents. And they uh, analyzed pentoxifiline or randomly allocated the patients to the pentoxifiline group receiving 400 milligrams per day and the placebo group. The primary outcome was the uh, ESA resistance index after four months, but secondary outcomes included hemoglobin levels. And the results show a significant increase in hemoglobin levels after four months in those patients treated with pentoxifiline as compared with those patients treated with placebo. However, the primary endpoint is a resistance index after four months um, did not reach statistical significance. Further large randomly, uh, randomized controlled trials are surely needed to prove these findings but it seems that pentoxifiline is an effective approach in the treatment of uh, patients with hyperresponsiveness against erythropoietin-stimulating agents. So the, the other treatment is the conventional iron treatment. As you know, uh, this can be uh, given orally or uh, intravenously. And uh, conventional iron treatments have shown mixed results in uh, patients with non-dialysis-dependent chronic kidney disease along with frequent adverse complications such as gastrointestinal effects or allergic reactions. And um, this is a multicenter double-blinded randomized controlled trial which included 234 patients with chronic kidney disease and iron deficiency anemia. And um, the authors analyzed uh, or randomly allocated these patients to receive a ferric citrate three grams per day versus placebo. And the primary outcome was an increase in hemoglobin levels of more than 1.0 grams per deciliter. And the results show that after 16 weeks, we have a significantly higher um, hemoglobin level in patients um, treated with ferric citrate as compared with those patients treated with placebo. The difference was about 0.84 grams per deciliter and significantly more patients um, reached the primary end point 1.0 uh, gram increase in hemoglobin levels. And also um, the different subgroups of patients show consistent results um, and that uh, the authors conclude that a therapy with, with ferric citrate 
may be a good option in the treatment of these patients, especially because you see uh, a difference um, even after one to two weeks after randomization. So in conclusion, I have the following take home messages for you. Chronic kidney disease is a frequent but underdiagnosed disease which needs special emphasis through the evaluation of risk factors for chronic kidney disease before undergoing surgery. Acute kidney injury is associated with chronic kidney disease and vice versa. Chronic kidney disease is associated with the development of acute kidney injury. Perioperative hypertension and the duration of these hypertensive episodes affect renal function and need to be considered in the perioperative period. CKD is associated with uh, anemia, and ferric acid seems to be a good alternative uh, in the treatment, in the early treatment of patients with chronic kidney disease and anemia. So maybe it is an idea to have a kind of checklist in mind um, in, uh, before undergoing surgery, and this could take the following form, evaluation of risk factors, comor comorbidities and renal parameters, check for anemia and start early therapy to avoid um, the transfusion of red blood cells, avoid the development of acute kidney injury, for example, via the implementation of the Cadigo bundles, and optimize peri uh, perioperative hemodynamics, and especially adjust for each patient, depending on the comorbidities uh, of each patient. So I would like to thank you for your attention, and I will be happy to, ask your question, to answer your questions. <laughs> Very nice.